Welcome to Real Filmmaking, my name is Corey, and today we're talking about the Canon EFM 55-200mm to 200 millimeter zoom lens. Now this is a lens that I honestly don't think gets enough love in the YouTube video filmmaking community, and I think a big reason is because people kind of misunderstand this lens. They don't understand like what this lens is meant to do, and like why you should have one in your kit. So hopefully today I can walk through some of the strengths of this lens, some of the weaknesses, and I can help you better understand like why you should consider picking one up. So first off the bat, let's talk some specs. Like I mentioned, this is a zoom lens, it's 55 to 200 millimeters. And so this is for Canon's APS-C crop cameras. So like mirrorless cameras like the M50, the M50 Mark II, the M6 Mark II. The field of view equivalent, if you're looking at full frame, it's about 85, 88 to about 300, 320 millimeters. This lens has a variable aperture, so that means the aperture changes as you move through the zoom focal length. So all the way open at 55, it's f4.5, and when you zoom in all the way to 200 millimeters, it is f6.3. This lens also has image stabilization, but I'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. So let's talk about build quality. Honestly, this lens is built pretty well. It's made mostly of plastic, but it's kind of like heavy duty plastic, plastic composite, and it feels very solid in the hand. It's got a nice zoom ring right here. There's a big strip where you can grip it really well. And then there's a nice focus ring right here too. So it's very easy to get focused with this lens. I really enjoy using it. It's built very well. So next let's talk about size. This lens is pretty tiny for a zoom lens. When you compare it to something like a 70 to 200 or even a 24 to 70, this lens is tiny. So you can see here, I have my iPhone and honestly the lens is only a little bit smaller than my iPhone. They weigh pretty similar too. So this is a very compact uh, and tiny zoom lens. Price wise, you can find this lens for $350 new or you can find it used anywhere from like 260 to 280, like you can find it used or second hand. And I think for the price, it's a pretty good deal for this lens. So now we're at the part of the video or the review that everybody wants to talk about, and that's the image quality. How does this lens perform optically? Which is a fair question, because when you invest money into a lens, you wanna know what it's gonna look like, how it's gonna produce pictures and video. And I can say, from using it over the last year, I think this lens does a really good job of capturing photos and videos. Would I say that this lens is like a pro like L-series lens if we're talking Canon glass? No, but I would definitely say it is like a really good mid-range lens. I think with the right lighting conditions, with someone who understands how to use a camera, control lighting, like who understands the basics of photography or videography, you can get some really good results with this, like semi-professional, I would say. One place that I think people will be surprised to hear that this lens excels in is in portrait photography. A lot of people wouldn't think a lens like this would create really good portraits, but because of the compression that this lens can get through the focal range, you can come up with some really nice portraits. I've shot a handful over the last year, and I've really loved how they've turned out. Like, shooting all the way at 200 millimeters, having enough light, and yeah, just having enough distance from the subject, you can get some really nice looking headshots, uh, you know, full body portraits, it's great. And I've really loved using the lens for portraits. It's been great. And I know some people are going to complain because they're gonna say, this lens doesn't produce the amount of bokeh that I want. But honestly, I think that the bokeh that you do get from this lens is fairly nice. It's not the crazy shallow depth of field that someone might be like, oh, I'm shooting at f1.4, I'm shooting at f1.8. But honestly, I find you don't need to shoot with that shallow depth of field all the time. For certain situations, that can be helpful. But if you're doing, for me, I find portraits or if I'm doing videography where I do want some of the context of the background, I don't want a super blurred out background. You just kind of lose all of that uh, piece that helps to inform your video or your portrait. So for me, not having an extreme crazy shallow depth of field is not a deal breaker with this lens. And again, you have to remember, each lens is different. It has strengths and weaknesses, and this lens isn't trying to produce a shallow depth of field. That's not its thing. So I mentioned the point of like, you know, lenses have strengths and weaknesses. A big weakness of this lens is the low light performance. And I think anybody seeing the aperture of 4.5 to 6.3 would say that this is a pretty slow lens. This is not a lens to use at night. If you're thinking you can take this lens out and do low light videography with it or shoot like portraits at night, 
please don't do it. Uh, this lens does not perform well in low light. That is like the biggest Achilles heel of this lens. It is not a low light lens. I would always recommend going for something like a f2, f1.8, f1.4 over this lens. And you know, that is a weakness, but it's also a strength of this lens. I think this lens performs really well in outdoor conditions where you have tons of light or in studio conditions like, you know, a YouTube studio or if you're shooting like something like a video set or a music video where you have lots of light, where you have control, where you have the time to set everything up and tweak it. This lens is great because again, like with the portraits and like portrait videography, you can get a lot of nice compression on your subjects. You can control all of the light that's coming in. You can shape it how you want and you can really get some nice results with this lens. And those have been like my best experiences and my best results with this lens is when I have an influx of light and I can either, if I'm doing video, control it with an ND filter or using shutter speed and different things to really get my exposure exactly how I like it. So image stabilization, I mentioned this earlier in the video, but I wanted to kind of have a dedicated point about this. This lens has image stabilization and this lens honestly has some of the best image stabilization that I've ever used in a lens. Now I know that's a pretty big claim, but again, I think this is one of the things that people misunderstand about this lens because they're like, oh, well, it doesn't have image stabilization and you know, it's not the right focal length, so I can't vlog with it. They just kind of write off what the image stabilization can do. But because this lens has great image stabilization, you can be shooting video at 200 millimeter handheld and it is going to help you to naturally just take all of those micro jitters out of your footage. And when you combine that with stabilizing software in Resolve or Final Cut or whatever you use, you can get some really smooth looking footage. And that has been probably one of the most shocking things about this lens, how good the image stabilization is. When I'm shooting photos, I've been able to get some results at lower shutter speeds that lenses that don't have IS have not allowed me to get. So I can shoot down at like 1 30th of a second and things where it's like, if I accidentally take a breath or something moves, like it would totally ruin the shot. The stabilization has really helped me to make sure the image is rock solid and sharp and stable. And yeah, that's been a game changer for me when I use this lens. For certain cameras, like I think particularly when I shoot with like the EOS M and I do Magic Lantern, I've done lots of videos about it but this is one of my favorite lenses to use with the EOS M. Um, if I'm really trying to get range and like the EOS M has all these different crop modes, but the fact that this has stabilization and it really helps if I'm trying to do a minimal setup with like maybe just a neck strap or a top handle or something, this lens is a game changer in helping keeping the footage stable. So I'd highly recommend just this lens for the stabilization because it's so good. So kind of bringing this video to a close, like who do I think this lens is for? And more importantly, how do I think this lens fits into a kit, like for video or photography? And like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I think people misunderstand this lens because they think like, oh, is this the lens I always have to have on my camera all the time? And like I can vlog with it, I can do all these things. No, that's not the purpose of this lens. I see this lens as the third in a trio of lenses that someone might have. So you might buy your camera like the M50 or the M6 Mark II and you have like your kit zoom lens, you know, your 15 to 45, your 24 to 70 full frame equivalent. And then you have maybe a couple prime lenses, maybe the 22 millimeter, you know, 35 equivalent or maybe of a 50. And then you're looking for a good telephoto zoom. And there's a couple options for the EFM cameras. I think there's like a, it's like a 55 to 150, don't quote me on that. It's something like that. And then you have the 55 to 200 that we're talking about. And the 55 to 200 really fits well into that third lens slot in your camera bag where you want something that will be able to give you just more reach when you're doing different things. Like maybe you're going out for a hike or something, or you're gonna go to a concert or someplace that's really well lit and you want a, you want just some more focal reach. You know, you wanna be able to get in tighter on the subject. This lens is great for that. And it works extremely well when you put it in the right conditions. So you have lots of light and you understand the strengths and weaknesses of this lens. You can get some really good results with it. I wouldn't say it should be your first lens, but if you're looking for maybe a second or a third lens, to kind of round out your kit, I would highly recommend this lens. I think it's a great lens. I think for the price too, it's a great budget option lens. You know, like I said, I think it's better 
than just like an entry level lens. It's not professional, but I think it is up there. It's a mid range lens. It's built well, it has good optics. And if you know what you're doing, you're gonna get some great photos and videos with it. So I can't recommend it enough. So if you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to Real Filmmaking for more content coming on a weekly basis about cameras, filmmaking, creativity, all that stuff. And until next time, keep making movies and watching movies, and I'll see you on Real Filmmaking.